Eskwepu sana mklanje se making moves so bisi pegene no mkaka ogu kikriza. Sivagashela u Rosalie Ackerman o se pita marisbeik e guazulu na dal one business logu kikriza ezi klaza. If my life was a breeze and we had this sort of awful thing happening, it would have, it would have knocked me out. Sipine Sivagashele e Irene e se Pretoria uguze urile bohile muweng asifundi se gabanzi nge skumba kanye ne miki kizo yezi telo ezi nangegege la izi nueli. Most people when I tell them that I've got 125 stitches on my face, you know they don't believe it. Seriously? Seriously. Mubabili labo so ma biznisi bazo za e studio. Mungu zote nge da ma biznisi abo, kanye, ne mini ningwane e pegene no kusebe nzi sana no mkaka ugu kikliza. We believe that there is a need for our products. With carrier oils, especially the ones that are cold pressed. I think that that is exactly what we need to do. We're not changing the product, we are changing people's perception of the product. Of the product. Global Manufacturing Competitiveness Index yango nyaga ka 2013 ya bala i China guskunda so kala emazweni ahamba pambili gusugela na mslanje kuyoze kutule imnyaga emislanu kumingindi swano wako kikriza mslaba chigelele. Uh, it's not at this stage obviously that we would like it but I think there has been growth. I think it would be unfair to say that for where we are right now there aren't enough. Gonyaga got 2010. In Ingizim Africa, Yabalo Guskunda Samashuma Mabili Nambili. Fusiga Golinde Lue Ugutin Gonyaga got 2015. In Yuga Gulis Balo, Iaguskunda Seshu Mini Shaka Lulunye. Godwa, Israel as an Ingizim Africa, Lawela Guinombolo, Yamashuma Mabili Nani. With that said, it's because we are importing most of our products from other countries instead of making our own. Lemboni ibu swa imikaka efana ne agro processing. Izi moto ama kemikali. Izi nzimbi, izi ngubo, anye nezi katulo. Lo mkaka ukasha ama ndu abatrishe bebe u 1.7 wama milioni. Upinde waike ama pesendi ayishum na ntani kuchi DP. I don't know much about it, but from the little that I know, I see a lot of males dominating. I've never heard of a female that's done or that's in manufacturing. It's mostly dominated by males and not enough females. Oku kikri za guna matuba ama ningi emsebenzi. Fusi kutala indima eba leki ili kumnoto wa sezweni. The manufacturing sector is not typically associated with female entrepreneurs or women-owned businesses. Gotwage, because of an increased focus on economic and gender equality, there are more opportunities for women-owned enterprise development within this sector. Namtanje, we're making moves. Sigle tell us my business, Ababil, Abesmam, Abazakela Ika, Mogu on Alum Kakalona, on my challenges, Amaning, Okala Sigletella and also my business, Ika Malak, U Rosely, or Puma, a inventi. Hi, my name is Rosalie Ackerman. This is company is in Vandy. I'm the managing director and founder. Uh, we produce rubber crumb and reclaim. Our reclaim is produced from tread rubber only, so it's a homogenous single compound product. Very consistent, excellent properties. And yeah, if you would like some more information, you can go to our website, www.envande.com. I'm Rosalie Ackerman. Uh, this is my wonderful, amazing husband, Gareth Ackerman. He's also my business partner and best friend. Um, this is my great friend, Nelly Lekonko. And we are here at uh, the Peter Marysburg Farmers Market. We're gonna go and uh, see our friends and some of our family who met us here this morning. How's Rose? Under pressure. She's fine. <laughs> She's fine. She's got such determination and such entrepreneurial skills. And... 
things that we lack in our family a little bit. And Hello. Rose and I have been together since school. So we met in high school instead of nine. Both Garrett and Rose were exceptional sportsmen and sports ladies or women. She was always very competitive. She loved her sport. She did as many sports as possible. She didn't want to just concentrate on one. Rose is there to sort of break the, break the ground as far as I can see it, and then Gareth comes, she pulls Gareth in tow to <laughs> keep, keep order in the like. chaos. And then she's got Gareth like a rock behind her that just follows behind. Together they just make an awesome team. The things I don't like to do, she will take care of. The things she doesn't like to do, I take care of. Okay, so yeah. yeah. Welcome, this is my house and the rest of my friends are upstairs, so uh, let's carry on up. I'm a very emotional person and I think that's why it's very important for me to have, have Gareth and um, I think I've learned from the beginning that to be emotional and to be vulnerable to a certain extent is, is fine. I think she got a lot from my dad, she hey? From dad, dad not is... from me. My dad was a businessman. Uh, he owned a, a property real estate company. That was right before there was a, a big crash in the property market, uh, and so his business actually failed. I've seen what happens when an entrepreneurial thing goes bad. Um, it was very difficult for him uh, to have his business um, go down. Is seeing Dad maybe fail at some businesses that he, um, you know, and, and various ventures that he went into, and I think it's something that she was determined that that wasn't going to happen to her. I think at the end of the day, even though all of that happened and we had uh, stuff repossessed uh, when I was in high school, uh, I went to go and live with my husband's family. So Rose moved in and stayed with us for a while. When the factory burnt down, um, Although that was such an awful thing, because I've had quite tough things that I've, I've sort of come through uh, in my life and gotten over, um, it almost was easier for me because I've, I've really learned to get over tough things. Whereas if my life was a breeze and we had this sort of awful thing happening, it would have, it would have knocked me out. So I think that's actually very important. Is um, I wouldn't change anything for that reason. My treasure is my relationship with Gareth and my kids and my family. I love my mommy and dad. Growing up. Through that, I've come to value that things are just things at the end of the day. And even if you go through something really difficult, um, you still you still can achieve things. You can't you, you can't blame what has happened in your past. Morning. Good morning, how are you doing? Welcome, fine. Very, very, very well. Is this where you work from? Yes, it is. This is in Vandy. Um, if we can start in the boardroom and I'll give you the safety briefing. After you, man. Thank you. So, welcome. What we need to just understand is in the factory, you've got to be careful of a forklift and watch where you're walking, don't trip over anything. Um, don't go up to a machine unless we say that that's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, we just, we don't want any accidents. Before you take me through to the other side, mm -hmm. what exactly do you guys do here? Because for a minute I was like recycling, then I was like rubber manufacturing. So a lot of things were going through my mind. Okay, a uh, short summary would be, we take industrial rubber bike product, yes. uh, and then we process that into a raw material. Uh, it's either crumb or reclaim. And that goes into the production process of making a rubber product. Okay. How are you doing, Gareth? Fine, and you? Very, very well. Gareth, what is it like working with your wife? I mean, she tells me that your background is more, you know, in engineering. Yeah. How has that helped the business since you've been here? 
Um, it's helped on the technical side. I get involved on the machine design and machine setup a lot. And then also on the lab side with all the testing and product quality control, it helps a lot in that. So, let's leave you to your work. Thank, Thank you very much, eh? Thanks. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> I was about to say, this is the dumping site, but uh, it's in art, actually. So this is your yard? Yes. Okay, all the rubber that we get, we don't process tyres. Okay. We are not a tyre recycler. Uh -huh. So everything in this yard, uh -huh. uh, though it looks different, it's uh -huh. all made of the same type of rubber, yes. which is a, a Nash Rubber SPL compound. Yeah, so you have different, uh, different kind of peelings here. We get peelings from the, the guys that um, retread truck tyres. Yes. Uh, also from... Um, the manufacture of, of tyres, we get um, what's called flashing, mm -hmm. um, and then we get buffing as well. So this is where everything starts from. So you get it and you stock it here, and then from here you take it inside the factory? Yes. All right. And then we start our process. Okay. Cool. Okay. When I first came here, I didn't even know what I was doing, but uh, my, my bosses, they just introduced me how to, to process the rubber, how to separate it in something like that. I'm seven zooming when the langa pagati. Check I rap a wuti i hamba rights. Check I rap a wuti i puma is me the same as writing the pack and ice. And then we check I have one on kama seven zoo with my seven zan in daylight. Okay, so this is where we take the, the raw compound and we mix it with a percentage of reclaim to see at what point the properties start to degrade. Because uh -huh. uh, this is information our clients need. So, so this really is, is what the clients will be doing. This is, that's why we've got a small machine here. It's just making, going through the steps that the client would go through to get a final product, which we can then test on our other, other process. So what kind of products does she offer you and what do you guys do with them? We, we are uh, rubber compounders yes. and we, we compound rubber, we put the, the material that we get from Invanda, we, we put that into our product and, we, and that finishes up in either conveyor belting or footwear, yes. uh, tyre retreads or any, any compound, we are we're custom compounders. Envy are one of our suppliers, they supply us with uh, reclaimed rubber and uh, crumbed rubber. We find their product from a quality point of view, very, very high standard quality product, uh, very uh, market related on the passing side of things and their service is very good, they have a good uh, delivery performance, they always get the product on time, right quality, right quantity. So you work with your husband, who's the yes. boss? I'm the boss. You're At the work, boss. I'm the boss, yeah. The manufacturing sector is dominated by three large subsectors. Sekurma lanage, ge chemical, e metal, ne machinery. Uyabanage e rubber crumble, na yoge e wala go nage lum kakalon. Futu yo nage e pinde invove is in te fan and process of cured rubber by product into thread reclaim. U rosili opuma la pay invent, u kole la gutige bona loga bagwenzai, igua nok benza ugut babe won na pambil, kuo lum kaka. Jenga mind you says you to kusana nat, u gustela gutige yini e benza uguti bahambe pambil, guo lenkund. I don't have any expectations. I'm just, I'm just here to actually enjoy the experience. Um, yeah, well, I've never been on TV before, so I'm quite interested to just have that experience. I'm a bit nervous. I think I do better when I don't prepare, so I'm just going to wing it. Rosalie's got absolutely no reason to be nervous. We're going to chat a little bit about what is a fascinating industry. <laughs> I've never come across anything like it. So let's start with the numbers. How big is the market? Markets. The market should be around around 400 tons a month. And, and what's that uh, numbers wise? Well, it depends on what if it's if it's reclaim or if it's crumb. Okay. Uh, on the on the reclaim side, probably about uh, 
probably about 250 tons a month at about eight rand a kilogram. Um, and on the crumb side, probably about no 500 tons a month is. at four rand, <laughs> four, five rand a kilogram. Okay, so, so let, let's, let's try so the So the market again. size. Market size, so 250,000. Yeah, so, so let's say 300,000 at eight rand. What's at eight rand. Eight? Okay, well, just to, just to, <laughs> just to like accommodate my bad maths, let's say 250,000 at 10. Okay. Okay, so that's what, like a two and a half million mm. rand? Um, yeah, mm. two and a half million rand a market a month. Yeah, that's uh, total market size. Total market size. And yeah. then crumb is um, about five hundred tons at five rand a kilogram. So if you're doing what a million mm. rand a month turnover from crumb, mm. that's that's a pretty significant yeah. share but of the your, market. Your, your cost of production is very high, so it's, it's quite a low margin business. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's it doesn't sound volume. like this business is going to make you very rich. It doesn't on small volumes, and that's, that's the mistake that we made when we started. Um, we had low overheads, so we thought, okay, you know, we can do smaller volumes, but it just worked out that it, it does not make sense if it's not, you need a, a sort of critical mass of, of the company to start producing um, enough to, to start making some decent profit. So that's, that's really what, we've, what we are striving toward at the moment. Um, now so what's your start. target? Well, our target is to get the whole market. Okay. <laughs> so. It's a bit ambitious. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's, what's a kind of realistic uh, a version of that target? No, I think that is actually realistic. Yeah. And this is not just entrepreneur talking. I have come through a fire in six years of this business to, to dampen my enthusiasm. Um, but basically, we produce an excellent quality product. Um, we give people, there, there are no reasons for people to import. And, and what of these people, you know, the international guys that come in, you know, dump their crumb and their, their reclaim here. Yes. How about we start sending some to their corners yeah, of the world absolutely. because we'll probably be cheaper given the exchange rates. Yes. Have you started to consider and look at international well, expansion? Yes, we have. Uh, we actually currently export as far as Australia. So we, we're getting wiser as we go. So you work with your husband, who's the yes. boss? I'm the boss. You're At the work, boss. I'm the boss, yes. At work, you're the boss? Mm. Okay, um, so it's lady on top. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you started the business, he came to join you? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. how do you switch off um, boss at home to, to a boss think, at work? To, to, yeah. to, you know, wife at home. I don't know if that means you're yeah, not no, the boss at no, home. No, no, I'm not. No, I'm okay. not. At home, my husband is a boss at home. Um, I think that the big thing for us is that neither of us are egotistical people. So uh, I think I see Gareth's value in how he is different from me. Um, and so there's, there's very little overlap between, um, you know, Gareth doing something when I should be doing it and why have you done this because that's my job you know it's 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 not like that and so we have a very strong relationship that's that's not easily shaken so yeah uh, every day working with Gareth is, is a pleasure. What do you need to shift with yourself um, to take this business to the next level? Yeah day? I think a lot of it comes down to self-confidence a lot of it um, and how you project that on other people because if people can see a confident person then they can believe in, in the product that you that you're making the thing that you're selling but I'm always trying to learn I, I know it's just many things I don't know and that I don't do well um, I think to be an entrepreneur you cannot be an all-rounder because you have to be excellent at some things which means by default you'll be shocking at other things and that's what, what certainly the at? case um, I think I'm, I'm very good at getting the vision, um, sort of anticipating things happening, um, seeing, seeing a plan for the future. I'm very good at starting things, um, and then Gareth is very good at finishing things. Okay, mm. so have you considered getting out there and, 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 and marketing yourself and mm. becoming an authority? Uh, whether it's environmentally yes. or with regards to the industry, becoming some sort of mascot. Yeah. You'd make a pretty mascot. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I think this is, this is probably the first thing that I'm doing on, on my journey to, to marketing myself with the business. So there are a lot of things that we do already, but things which I don't do for the reason of um, uh, getting attention. Um, so, yeah, the, okay. I don't... I don't focus on the stuff that I'm doing already, but that is already there in the background. So maybe I need to I need to put it a little bit more into limelight so that people can see see it. Mm. I love your confidence. I love your faith. I love your your faith in your product and, and, and your confidence, you know, in, in, in what you produce. And I wish you the very best. Thank you. I want to send you off to 
chat to somebody, you know, it's always nice in business to have mentorship yes. or to have somebody that you can bounce ideas off and get mm. some feedback. And once you're done with that, I'll, I'll chat to you a little bit thereafter. Great, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Rosalie is now going to spend some time with Roche Mamabulo from the Hope Factory for a coaching session. We'll catch up with them later to hear how the coaching session went. Making um, that was quite interesting. Um, Pepsi is um, a, a nice guy, straight to the point. <laughs> so we'll see now what uh, what happens with the the coach. I hope you'll have a new new point of point of view, uh, something that we haven't considered. Um, so looking forward to it. It's nine years later, and most people, when I tell them that I've got 125 stitches on my face, you know they don't believe it. Seriously. Seriously. The cosmetic and toiletry manufacturing industry has recently seen a rise of a number of trends. These include greater interest in healthy living, anti-aging products, and a great demand for sustainably manufactured cosmetics containing natural ingredients. Siga Satuk Vagashara Lapa Epico, Ea Sungulo Rilibuhil, go 2011. Ugu Zogu Tigebona, how are they taking advantage? Puana Lama Trends, Akona Glumkak. My name is Rilebuhile Moweng, founder of AfriBerry. We do agro processing of oils and butters used for skin and hair purposes. A unique selling point is that our oils and butters are SABS approved, they are cold pressed as well as organic. They can be used by the whole family for a beautiful skin and healthy growing hair. You hold your sponge up with your right hand and on top of the sponge up there are two holes. So what you do, you put it in like that. Welcome to my home, Tarkene Nkahar. Kile haye la kalena, me wa kalinta ki wa ka barietetsi. Ena ki ntatu wa ka paseka maleme, nikmeni ya hai ki skubidu. Ena ki me wa ka merian maleme, nikmeni ya hai ki ninja. Ravisana ninja le au se rile bohile. Gronstata was a bit backwards than Moko Houting, and my parents were staying at that time and I was living with my grandmother. So in a hurry, I'm gonna have a little more bona di colo di quits. Who pretty tabatina de macatam or he one no no do lie as a child. Haki hopola is a liquor at a hoba mahuebo. I must have been 10 years old. I remember taking my cousins to, they were underage, but I remember taking them to a tavern. I'd say, Lihola Horbanaba Babanyani Bankabua Shua Basinseka Kadinko. And then, you know, the people were in disbelief. And as soon as, you know, my cousin spoke, you know, they'd actually pay to hear them speak in English. And it was a big, big sensation. I remember at that time we must have made something like two hundred. When we met, it was a beautiful love story. I had actually went to go visit her, her father's church, you know. Um, my cousin invited me, and I went there. And when I got there, it was a Friday evening. I was these quiet dudes that are sitting at the corner. So he has more peggy, look peggy. You know, there is something about this girl. She never compromises when it comes to beauty. Not only that, 
the other strong poet, she never gives up. In our lives, we have seen her making things really happen. Rimoko Acro Branch with my family to have fun. And then, okay, both of you can hop on top, just hop on top. <laughs> hold all the strings down here. Dumela? Dumela, Sia. Lega. Retain the guy. Retain. Eh. Eh, kawa na gali pizzi. Ha hulu fan. Eh. Okay, onka. Oh, ni na selimbet. Kya na katiba Sia? Oh, kya na wala. Wita halao. What's going on here? Okay, Mona, repizi ra packager. Okay. Re expel the oils arona which are cold pressed. The beauty about these oils is that they are organic. So, kikopa, take me through the whole process. Ya mo hai from beginning the sponsor letter to ending up where we are. Okay. Eno kisi po. Yes. Lab technician ya arona ya Afri Berry. Uh huh. Utala the oil, adi fe tea. Tea then passes them on to Doreen. Yes. Doreen will then ensure that the pumps are sealed. Yes. The reason for the long process yes. is because we use airless pumps. Uh -huh. The airless pumps helps preserve the lifespan of the organic oil. Yes. A. Okay. And then the tibela moya hori uke uskaba kena kahara pump. Yeah. A. How long does it take and what's the procedure I think? Okay, the pressing time takes 10 to 14 days, Ooh. and then the testing can take any time from a month to three months. Yeah. Eh. You know, industry is a industry is a very important thing. It's a very important thing. It's a very important thing in this industry. Where did it come from? It was exactly nine years ago eh. when I was involved in a motor car accident. You know how Nalibutata only in a situation, you go around trying to find products that are affordable, that can help you heal. And I think that's where all this came about. Because a year from then, I started using argan oil. And Katola Hore, it flattened the scar much quicker. It got rid of the redness. It's nine years later, and most people, when I tell them that I've got 125 stitches on my face, yeah. you know, they don't believe it. Seriously? Seriously. Did you study for this? Where did you get, you know, the, the, the know-how to say, what can I use? Okay, I didn't study for it. Yes. I was blessed that when the business started uh, through the Skimsa government, I got access to SABS and I worked intensively in the lab technician setting. Mm. And they were able to advise about the different um, amino acids and the different vitamins that help reduce scarring, that speedy up recovery and so forth. Mm. How many products do you guys have? Okay, we've got five products. Yeah. We've got the African raw shea butter. Yeah. And then we've got the Jamaican black castor oil. Yeah. We've got the Moroccan oil. Mm -hmm. We've got the MU oil mm -hmm. as well as the coconut oil. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. 
So Hassel Ferize and you've packaged everything. Lisa Kai has one. Okay, from here it goes through to our cold storage, mm. which is kept at yeah. 18 degrees Celsius. Yes. And then there it's boxed and it's kept until collection or delivery. Eh, yeah. got yeah. Okay. These are admin offices. Okay. This is our receptionist, Liesel. Liesel meets here. Enoki Wandile, dispatcher Yarona. He's in charge of the cold storage. It's called Njanba. Ah, Sapil. What are your core values in Zamugwa? We push team building, we, we, we push values and morals. But besides that, we try and push speed mm -hmm. in how we service our clients. Mm -hmm. So that is very important in, yeah. our, in our business. Uh -huh. So, how many employees were here? It was just me yeah. looking across her, her yes. looking across me. Yeah. Just the two of us. Yeah. And uh, we grew from that to what we are today. Mona, get the oils stay ready for dispatch. And a coconut that we sell, kapalk. Oh, eh. okay. And you know the type of clients you have to work with, Moko Hai. Do you only sell Kodi shop or Fela? Or Lena can I work in Kilesi? I get a kibata staff salon. Hobani Rizama who promoted the shop or salon. Hang at the Haba to buy phone, Baba to the product salon. Rebabuti sa ho rebatwa kai badula kai and then rema rumella mo huling hau finya na huba ona. So hi bani, there's an agent in the area yes. then reba rumella huyon. All right. Eh. We do facials, manicures, pedicures in the beauty industry. We started stocking Afrobeer in 2012 and Bogi came to present the product to me and herself and I got a liking in it. Um, it is very good for stretch marks, psoriasis, eczema, everyday concerns of a, of a lady. And um, we do see very good results with the product. Three months ago, um, a lady from Soweto, on her own, she generates 150,000 rand every month. Chemical manufacturing, like high. A Kuruman gets in Tesla sugar sugar. Sikuruma and gets in Tesla wheat cobisa. There's was good to eat poshong. Now let's get footy as far as in Tolese as okes. Sipina footy and alleges and the wood Unugam land. We are born again when I get Lumcacalon. Who was Uxiza Abant Abafuna is in Tesla sugar sugar. Jango was a conama product. I should get a footy langa pant. Urlebu Hill. Uzakela in Dumezu Lenkuluka cool. Giona Lenkul. Gangampania. Jenga manje uso studio se tu kutu sana nati. Ogu shela gutike yini loga gwenzai. Ekuso msiza guti business like Linton Jobal. The big day is here. I'm here for my studio interview. I'm feeling very nervous and excited at the same time. How is it over here? Welcome to Making Moves. Thank you so much, Pepsi. Take a seat. Thank you. So, tell me about Afriberry. What I normally say to people when they ask me, you know what business are you in? I normally say that we sell hope. We sell joy, um, mainly because the products that we manufacture, you know, bring visible difference to people's lives. They bring joy, they bring laughter, they bring all sorts of happy feelings. Okay, and uh, you know, there's, there's a market that seems quite flooded with local and international beauty products. Mm -hmm. What makes Afri Berry different and why do you imagine you're going to succeed in this market? Okay, we believe that there is a need for our products. With carrier oils, especially the ones that are cold pressed, they've got a travel system. They travel beyond the epidermis, which is the outer layer of the skin, and they deal with the dermis, which is the inner layer of the skin. That's where your collagen and your tissues are. So you're making money from the business? Yes, we're making money. Where's the bulk of the revenue coming from? When the business started, we explored lots of drivers. We've been in a pick and pay, we've been in a spa, we've been in supermarkets. Currently we are in some cash and carries, but that method hasn't proven to really um, 
bring us the revenue which our other drivers are. Our biggest driver right now is we replicate ourselves. We educate women um, and we tell them the benefits of the products and we train them, inform them as to how it is that they work and they in turn um, become ambassadors of the product and that's where our biggest revenue comes from. Three months ago, um, a lady from Soweto, on her own, she generates 150,000 rand every month. I, I know that your business is, is almost split into two. Yes. So you sell to wholesalers yes. and or to spas and the like, mm -hmm. and you don't brand your product as Afriberry. That is just the white label solution. Okay. And then you've got the Afriberry solution, which is the same product, but is branded Afriberry. Is my understanding correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So is she selling the white labeled or the branded product? She's selling the white label because of the volume she moves. She moves easily between four and 500 units on a monthly basis. It's, it's a non-branded product? She brands it, but when she brands it, the label is approved by us. Mm -hmm. We see what elements are on there, and there's also guidance that goes into it. It's, it's a fairly complex kind of structure, although I think it's a very clever structure. So you've got Afriberry, the mother brand, yes. and you sell that into retail and into spas, etc., etc. And that is the Afriberry brand, and you work on that and you build it, right? Yes. Okay, and then you've got the manufacturing, and in order to distribute, You've got your white labels where I, as Pepsi, can take the product and can sell it using my own label that you approve, but I buy from you and I on-sell um, to my own network. Yes. And then you've got businesses like pharmaceutical businesses and other manufacturers that maybe do other products like face creams, etc., etc., mm -hmm. and they buy your product as an ingredient yes. that goes into another product. Yes. Are those the three kind of streams? Yes, those are the three kind of streams. And the one that's most profitable are the people that are putting on their own labels and are on-selling, which are typically individuals that do volume. Is that correct? Uh, I would say it's a 50-50 split at the moment. I'm finding the model a little bit confusing in the sense that there's a bit of Avon um, there there's a bit of you know distributing into retail there. Um, there's a little bit of distributing into spas there, which are all very different business models. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure that you're clear on which one you want to go with and where the growth lies and your focus is a bit split. I could be wrong, but I'm going to send you off for a coaching session and we'll chat afterwards. Thank you, Pepsi. Okay, my dear. Lilibuhile is now going to spend some time with Tabo Eric Mashale, owner of Unusual Business Breakfast, for a coaching session. We're going to catch up with them later to hear how the coaching session went. Uh, the studio interview was very challenging. I was very nervous. There was some quite um, difficult and challenging questions from there. But I'm hoping the coaching session will be enlightening. Kwa kwa soma business, umuntu o zala ki kaza elba legi lega kulu, eksi zainu soma business. Uba si zala nangezi ndesku nwa uto guidance, i support, api ndege futa ba si ze futi, nange accountability. Uyabona ki, ite zalo waka kulu ge lana ke usoma business ni mkakresh waki, ugele wane babu uba lege ga kulu, ngoba ke futi mkakresh, upinda msi ze nga lo kesku nwa uti, uo personal, na bo business goals. Janga manje age sizo ugutige, umkakresh wetu ge, no soma business wetu, esna elana estudio. I coaching session yao, ihambe ganja. Tell me about the business before the fire. Mm. How was it doing? Um, it was doing well. February was our best month ever. Um, and then the 1st of March was the fire. It was quite, um, I wouldn't maybe use the word devastating, but it, it was difficult. Um, when, you, when you just sort of start seeing your business doing really well and there's this big promise and, you know, you're going to hire more people and we're going to reduce, the, you know, dumping by so many more tons a month and then, and then the fire burns down. So, um, 
that was that was difficult. And then to restart, basically you launched the business. Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we've we rebranded the company. It was E N V and E, which actually stands for Environment and Energy, which is the reason we started. Okay. Um, and so we took that E N V and E and, and made it squashed it into one word. And so that's where Envendi comes from. Ah, yeah. I don't think the problem is the product. I don't think mm. the problem is the quality. I mean, you guys mm. are. You're happy with that. The yeah. market is saying that your, your product mm. is okay. Is how you sort of change that perception. Yeah. And from there, it becomes this tipping point that actually okay. takes you to the next level. Thank you. Making moves. It's a double R affair. Roche and Rosalie are back from their coaching session. Roche, I'll start with you. Yeah. What insight um, have you been able to pick up? about Rosalie's business? The challenge is how they actually position their product towards their customers and how they framed it. And we're talking mostly about framing your product. But what I felt they missed also in that pitch is the environmental aspect of it. Because quite frankly, I mean, the environmental you know, uh, aspect in the country is a big thing and it's a selling point as well. So what we actually discussed was they need to reframe their product. A typical example of how you can reframe that is to say, we actually partner with our customers to produce a product for you and we give ownership to you, right? Okay. Once you reframe it that way, customers see themselves as part of the partnership. They don't see themselves as you are selling to me. They see themselves as we're actually acquiring this product together. Mm. I told you it was something small. No, absolutely. Because <laughs> they've got the right pieces. Yeah, Good product, competitively priced. Yeah. There's no yeah. reason no. Mm. why this should be yeah. an import product. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Um, storage, credit, mm. all, you know, all of those kinds mm. of things. Uh, uh, cost effectiveness, yes. speed yeah. to, to client, mm. all of yeah. those kinds of things yeah. work in your yeah. benefit. But somehow, it's mm. not taking off as quickly mm. as it as could. It should, yeah. And maybe it is, it's a framing thing. Yeah. Because if you look at the most successful companies or consumer products yeah. in the world, there's a, stuck, there's a framing thing. Yeah. So Facebook doesn't sell, you know, really mm. a website mm. that allows you to connect mm. with other people. Mm. They sell community friends. and, yes. you know, they sell friends. Yes. That's mm. what they sell. Yes. I love yeah. it. What did you get out of it? Um, well, I think the, the two things are, um, we're going to work more with our customers and producing a product which is specific to their requirement. And then secondly, I think we, we're going to look at renaming our, our reclaim so that it's not called Trade Reclaim. We'll maybe possibly rename it Reconstituted NRSBR because that's what it is. That is the rubber compound. Oh, fantastic. Mm. It's a Rolls Royce affair. I love it. <laughs> Roche and Rosalie, thank you for joining us. You guys rock and I wish you. you the best. I think you're doing something fantastic. I think you're working hard at it. I think the fact that you came through the fire mm -hmm. where everything just got destroyed mm -hmm. and you're rebuilding again is absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you very Thanks. much. So in a moment, we're going to welcome Rilbu Hila back into the studio to find out how her coaching session went and what insights she got from her coach. Making What is lacking in your, in your company, you like branding. Your brand needs to be known out there. Yeah. So what you need, you need to drive your brand. You're gonna educate people about your brand. Don't rely on people posting on your Facebook and say, hey, I had a good experience. That's good, that's marketing. People, they don't want to be sold at all times. Add value to people by posting things that they don't know about your brand, what you want to drive, and as a result, then, it will be easier to sell. They'll want to buy from you. There's a product out there that they sell hope as well. So what you need to do as well on the product itself, say the hope you've been looking for. You see, it speaks to a person. So, oh, the hope. I want to get that hope. Oh, it, it must be your tagline, the hope you've been looking for. Making so Rele Buhila and Eric have spent time together Rilebuhile, has there been a shift in your thinking at all? A vigorous shift. As we were talking with Eric, he brought forth a number of pointers that were lacking in our business. One being uh, brand awareness, uh, brand advocacy, brand insistence, um, and brand... Associ by association. Oh, and brand by association. Because of the fact that the products are doing so well on their own, I think we, we omitted the branding element of the business. 
What brand are we building here? She has been uh, mixing Afriberry and Picoco, and then she will then put Picoco. Sometimes she will put Afriberry. Then that was a bit confusing to the market. So we said, now which one is important to you? And we came to an agreement that Afriberry is the one that should be on the on, on the products, and we should be able to build that brand. Okay. So now, Rilebuile. I think from the coaching session, what I got is that. Picoco Innovations is the manufacturer, it's the behind the scenes, but the brand that we are building is the Afriberry brand because that's the brand that's growing vigorously. So the advice that I got is to, on our white labels, feature the Afriberry brand as opposed to the Picoco Innovations brand. So, so now, how is Afriberry going to be distributed, the private label? She's going to distribute it into the uh, retailers and then those who want to distribute privately this brand, I mean, Afriberry, they need to come to her. She will say, you take it as it is and go and sell out there. As a result, it, it, it is benefiting her and also it's benefiting the, the person who is actually selling. Okay. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. Partially, yes. Partially. Yes. Which part don't you agree with? Like with regards to pharmaceuticals, they maybe use um, the carrier oils as they are based to develop whatever. So we can't insist on them um, naming whatever end product Afriberry. They just using the carrier oils maybe in a formulation of a night cream or of a day cream. But I do agree with um, Coach Eric with regards to people that buy in smaller batches or small to medium batches to say that we must insist that they take the product as it is so that, you know, um, our brand is maximized. Okay. I think you need to get clear on what the plan is for the private label mm -hmm. as a standalone brand. Mm -hmm. um, because the other stuff is working. Yes. And perhaps there's no need to mess with it too much. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to seeing you in the future. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, and Pepsi. And I love your business and I think you're doing fantastically well. Thank you, Pepsi. Okay. Today we saw that the manufacturing industry is very demanding but can also be hugely rewarding. We also learned that the best businesses are those that offer a unique product and therefore are able to remain competitive. Catch us again next week, Monday, for more inspiring stories of women in business. Goodbye from the Making Moves team. Making Moves. The journey has evoked all sorts of wonderful, enlightening um, emotions, um, lessons for us as a company, and we can only soar from here on. I think reframing exactly exactly what they said, and that was that was very good insight, um, very very well picked up by Rush. <laughs>